vented it in. Okay. <laughs> they, were, they, they were doing a lot of parking lots, and they thought, hey, why not, you know. Why, why not just cement the river? It's, you know, yeah. it's there. So, so th now does, when you have rain like this, does the water hey. flow? Are we recording? Oh, yes, we just started. Awesome. Hello, live people. Yeah, we just came up, so um, I will tweet Should we out tweet this out? Yeah, yeah we tweet should it tweet out, out the can... event page there. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll tweet it on the... Okay, great, and then I'll yeah. uh, retweet. Uh, Boom. Hmm. Hang on. All right. All right, I'm going to shoot that out right now. All right. Let me know when you two are ready. Say that, are you on, are how you do on like, I tweet it out? Oh, do you, do you have, um, are you following me? On, oh, yeah, just, just retweet I, what I just tweeted there. That'll, that'll okay, do it. Okay, that sounds good. That'll do it. Sorry. That's all right. Yeah, the, the link is like, you know, my email address in college was this long, actually. It was funny. We can never give it out to anybody because it was just so, uh, so crazy. So are you on LTE in, in your car? Oh, she, she disappeared. Just lost it. She'll come back. Do 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 do. There she goes. I already dropped out. I'm so sorry. That's okay. If if we really get into trouble, we can call you on the phone too. So. Um, oh, okay. So that that's a that's an option as well. So that way you don't have to sit in your car the whole time. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, we should probably start before we lose you again. So let me. Uh, okay, sounds good. All right, we will start in. Let me pull my notes here. In three, two, one. Hey, everybody! It's Lon Sybin. We are back for episode number eighty-eight of Behind the Video, and joining me today, as always, is my co-host Tim Street from Los Angeles, California, the home of the rain. Tim, how are you? Yeah, I'm I'm a little bit wet. I've been I've actually been wearing uh, water boots all weekend, so I can you know, you can splash in the puddles. I can splash in the puddles, and let me tell you, that's a fun thing to do even as a grown up. So <laughs> I, I highly recommend it. And we have a guest today. You can hear her chuckling. It's yes, Sandra Payne. Hi everybody. Hi, it's nice to see everyone. <laughs> So, Sandra, you're a glutton for punishment. More than 90 episodes of web series that you've produced. That's a lot of work. Yeah, in so, fact, I'm coming up on 100, I think. Wow, so you so, keep in track. So what is it that you do beyond producing 90 of these web episodes? You have a company, right? And, and what, what, what's, I do. Uh, what's the whole What's the whole story? Um, I have a boutique production company, and we've been concentrating on digital production, making stuff online, and um, and... It's just been a lot of fun learning the digital space and being sort of deeply immersed in that. We also do a little bit of uh, corporate video stuff and been growing our production company, building our toy chest with lots of fun gear and cameras and stuff. And today, Sandra is launching Web Series Producers in Cars with Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> She's in her car. The audio sounds great. It's a it's a very isolated audio environment there. So, so as as innovative as we can be, we're still at the behest of internet service providers, none of which we name on the show because they always disconnect us when we talk about them. So we will just uh, we'll just keep them uh, them quiet there. So so now you're you're joining us today because both you and Tim are going to South by Southwest. So while I am stuck in the snow here, you will be doing that. So tell us about what we should be expecting at South by Southwest and, and why you're excited about it. Because that's in your hometown of Houston, right? Uh, I'm actually an L.A. Oh, based you? person. Yeah. Why did I think and you were in Houston? <laughs> I don't know. And South oh. by Southwest mission is actually control, in Austin. Mission control, mission <laughs> control. Oh, you know why? Because you, you won an award in Houston. That's why I was seeing this on your, on your bio. That's what it was. So I take it all back. You're from L.A. And, and, and South by is in Austin, Lon. So, uh, oh, never mind. I'm, I'm just going to. You're batting a thousand Yeah, today. I need to go back to bed. So. That's okay. Um, yeah, South by Southwest is famously in Austin, and uh, it's quite the scene. Um, I went there last year for the very first time, and I will say it was overwhelming, which I think is the most common adjective describing South by Southwest. There was just an overwhelming amount of content there. However, we did manage to put a web series meetup on the books in an official capacity and had a good turnout last year. So there was um, probably 40 to 50 people who attended, and um, we were able to connect with all those people and help them get the word out for their web series and then this year Tim is joining me to co-host so that we can do an even more 
amazing job of helping people promote their web series. Yeah, we're we're expecting ten to fifteen people this time. <laughs> <laughs> Tim is an we'll, amazing, <laughs> amazing we'll just, ability we'll just, to like. We'll, We'll focus hard on those 10 to 15 people. <laughs> we will. <laughs> and, and what kind of business opportunities are there there at South by Southwest? Because it seems like it's, it's become so big that you've got, you know, with this niche of people that go to this event, there is niches in niches. So how do you, how do you find who you're looking for? What's, what's the trick? I think Tim should answer that one because he's actually the master of South by Southwest, like the guru. So, Tim, you tell us, how do you do business at South by well, I, I think that the best thing to do is to start ahead of time and, you know, j just like you're going to a restaurant, you know, what are you in the mood for? You Pizza, chicken, barbecue, speaking of barbecue, I will be having a cleanse at South by Southwest. <laughs> I will be doing a barbecue cleanse. I, I, I've been eating vegetarian for a long time, no just meat, no ready. dairy. <laughs> Gearing up and for those ribs. I am ready for my my once a year feast. But uh, anyways, think about what you want ahead of time and then make a short list of who those people are. Once you've got your badge for South by Southwest, you can log into South by Southwest social and there you can search those topics. So if you want to search web series, YouTube, v VFX, whatever you're, you're into, look at that. You'll see who's signed up, who's going there. If you don't already know them, ping them. You're allowed to contact people and go, hey, would you like to have a meeting? You know, the, the bottom line, though, I think a lot of people when they're starting out is they don't really know what they want. They're like, well, I'll just make videos, I'll stick them online, and good things will happen you really need to spend time defining what those good things are. And I think Sandy's really good at getting out there and meeting folks and, and knowing these web series people. You, you've interviewed how many different web series producers, Sandra? Well, I think for our first, one of our first um, web series called The Web Files, we did 51 episodes over the course of a year. So that did give us a deep immersion into the community. We were able to interview all the people involved in those 51 episodes. And then a lot of the people, even though once we retired our show, there was a lot of people that did continue to want to be on the show. So I've been able to continue to connect with people because of that show. That's it. So, what kind of things are, are you know, if you've talked to so many, and, and this is you know, probably within the context of South by Southwest, but also just in general, what are some of the common problems that web series producers are experiencing from the many that you've talked to? Is there some, you know, what, I'm, I'm sure some of the obvious ones are out there, but anything that, that you think is, is really something everyone needs to think about and plan for that they're not thinking about perhaps when they try to launch one? Definitely. I think that, um, as Tim knows, the constant refrain in our community is how to monetize. How do you monetize? It's just impossible to really tell people how to do that in a nutshell. It's a very complex problem, and there's a lot of strategy behind doing that well. And then promoting yourself well is a really important side thing because you. It's. I, I kind of think when you're making a web series, 20% of your time is going to be spent making the web series and 80% of your time is going to be marketing your web series. Right. And if you're off on those levels, you're not going to be able to get the word out very well. It's um, oh, So much of your time has to be devoted to marketing. And marketing well is a, a different even than just marketing in general. There's definite strategies that you should put into play. You need to be on all sorts of social media and constantly kind of being out there with your message but not in an annoying fashion and where's the line so that's kind of the two main things I think are important. And I guess it really varies based on I guess a whole host of reasons maybe the audience you're trying to attract and, every, and, and all the other things that that go into it so it's uh, a quite a difficult business to say the least but it's something that I think uh, if, if you're successful there's a lot of good things that come with that that success, um, for sure, including um, you know doing podcasts from your your car. As a, <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing how well this works. You know, there, there is a there is some precedent for you know people doing uh, shows in cars. So you know this could be a new thing for us. So. Uh, well, so you know, you got you got to hop on the bandwagon sometime. That's <laughs> that's right. Yeah, in, I'm in just it. following in Jerry Seinfeld's lead. <laughs> exactly, that, that's where it works. So, Tim, what are you looking forward to most at South by Southwest? What should people in the space be uh, signing up for when they get out there? 
to Austin, not Houston. Is that for me or Sandy? Yeah, that's for you, Tim. And then we can have Sandy take up. The... You know, for me, it's it's really about the social connections. And, you know, I'm looking forward to the web series meetup because I really enjoy our community. I love to hear what people are doing, how they're producing shows, what new techniques they're using for marketing their show, um, innovative ways that they're approaching a production. I, I just... Just, I love that birds of a feather kind of feel, and you really get that at Austin uh, at South by Southwest. And so the Web Series Meetup will be great because it'll be ground zero for Web Series creators to come together and, and share information about their shows. I, I think, you know, the other thing that um, is is great is that there's cross pollination. So. Uh, it's it's great to to meet web series people, but it's also cool. You know, I can remember years back, I was walking into an afternoon party, and I got there a little bit early in a bar, and I walk in, and this guy's like putting these boxes, like this box together out of plywood, and I'm looking at it, and I'm like, what? You know, it's got all these wires, all these gizmos, and I'm like, what? What is this? He's like, oh, it's a printer. I'm like, a printer. He says, yeah, it, it's a 3D printer. I was like, oh. what? He's like, yeah, hi, my name's Bree. And, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's building one of the early prototypes for a 3D printer. So you see that kind of stuff at South by Southwest. It's the place where things happen first. And that is it. That's where uh, uh, Twitter launched there, right? Wasn't that where yep. Twitter launched and uh, Foursquare and all the yep. other stuff? So it's uh, it's really really neat stuff. Sandy, anything in particular that you're going to be looking for while you're out there? I think that um, I am excited about like last time when I was there, I did attend some of the keynotes and they were really fantastic. And you have the opportunity to learn from some really great minds that are in this uh, interactive space. So I probably attend quite a few of the keynotes, as many as I can, and then the parties are pretty fun. So. I've, heard, I've heard good things about those parties, so we'll have yeah. to see, see where that goes. And I'm sure, yeah, Tim, there's... As, as, as our friends uh, from Marketing Over Coffee, John Wall and Christopher S. Penn, say, South by Southwest is the single best opportunity to ruin your personal brand. <laughs> Because <laughs> if you do anything wrong there, it's going to make it to the internet. Yeah, in a heartbeat, because everybody is broadcasting constantly. So there's tremendous <laughs> tremendous uh, risk and great reward await you in Austin uh, this year, including um, a lot of ribs. So I'm sure we'll see uh, Tim tweeting a few pictures with that uh, barbecue bib on and uh, <laughs> a big slab of something yeah, going on there. So, But a big slab of stuff on YouTube, Tim. If we can transition to our top uh, yeah. five of the week. Um, we have our usual uh, top five. Some some folks new, some folks moving around a little bit. Um, and this is top five sans Vivo. You've, you've yes. taken out Vivo because music video, people are just like listening to music. Right, they're they're listening to that Katy Perry song like over and over again. So you know what, we're gonna we're gonna skip those, but focus on some of the independent creators. And um, I, I think we might want to take number five off the list soon too. I just been fascinated with it. This is a uh, Muyap, which is the Turkish music uh, channel. So um, they they consistently get in the top ten. Uh, right now, they have thirty million views in at coming in at number five on our top five list. So uh, Muyap, the Turkish music channel, still uh, generating views there. Um, our friend, the Disney Collector, Sandy. Have you ever heard of the Disney Collector? No, I'm sorry, I haven't. So we we talk about her every week, but I'll just, in a nutshell, tell you that you know all the effort you put into web series can be um, easily dwarfed by taking out Disney toys and putting your pointing a video camera at them and taking them out of the box because oh, that I, is, yes, <laughs> that's I, what you do. There's quite a few people that you're like, really? That's how you're gonna make your content? You're gonna be famous because of this like strange niche? Yeah. It's, yep. it's, it's amazing. 39.6 million views. So I am sure they are in the six figure or greater territory income wise from Brazil. Uh, so that is, is number four. So you, maybe we can make a web series about people who make Disney toy videos or something. And the, it there would be go. huge. <laughs> it would be huge. The other thing that's huge is gaming, of course. And number three is this guy. He calls himself Stampy Longhead. Yeah. And he does a new Minecraft video every day. Of course he does. And he doesn't swear. At least the ones that I've watched hasn't uh, haven't haven't had any swearing in them. So maybe that's why he's doing as well as he is because parents feel okay with people, their kids watching it. Forty point five million views this last week. So it's not bad. 
That's, that's not, a good week's work, right? Not bad at yeah, all. Yeah, that's really amazing. Sandy, what does this make, how does this make you feel? I mean, you, know, you think about the effort. I mean, there's some effort to do these videos. Don't get me wrong. But, but you know, you, you think about the slog that you go through producing a web series that you're really yeah. proud of, and then, like, nobody watches it, and, and then you got these guys. <laughs> like, what, what's <laughs> – why, how do you keep on going, right? What's the deal? Well, I think that each, each iteration of making a web series is a, a learning curve to figure out how to do better to find your audience and I think I will say Tim is a really good resource for um, ha like deep, be, deeply thinking about how to do better with that side of things and making sure that you're making content that you're not spending so much money on for the such a low return so you gotta think of things that are you can do cheaply and you can do fast but still do it well because it's kind of kind of that three-pronged thing. You can have it cheap, you can have it fast, you can have it quickly. A couple of those things need to come into the mix for web series and a lot of times people with web series do none of those things. <laughs> right. It's expensive. What, what is it? it takes it's, forever. It's, it's cheap, fast, or good. Yeah. You, you, right. you get to pick two. <laughs> that is <laughs> Any two. <laughs> right. And so unfortunately it's a, it's a learning, I think it's just a learning curve for all of us. It is. It's tough, you know, and yeah. and you, and you have you know people like at number three and uh, number two is uh, late night with Jimmy Fallon, the new the new late night show. I guess the the new Carson, if you will, for us old 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 people now, you, here. You know, you know who taught Jimmy Fallon how to use social media? Was it you, Tim? No. Nope. Who Steve was Steve Garfield of SteveGarfield.com. Really? Yeah, Steve wow. Garfield of Steve Garfield. He gave all the secrets away to Jimmy Fallon. No kidding. So there you go. And, and Jimmy, he, Jimmy is really good at it. Yeah, you know, a lot well, of these late night guys Steve, are. Steve Garfield was he's like the first video blogger. So who better learn from, right? We got to yeah. get him on the show one day too to talk we to him do, about we some do. of his secrets. And um, so Jimmy Fallon's show, forty six and a half million views on YouTube last week for coming in at number two, which actually is I've never he's never made the top five. So um, it's uh, yeah, it's you know I think having that see, big network thing helps. See what the helps. Super Bowl will do for you. Yeah. you know you get promoted on the Super Bowl, and then you get into the top five on on YouTube. That's how and it I, works. Man. I will say having Jerry Seinfeld on was probably helpful. Yeah, just <laughs> yeah, his, a little bit, right? his description of childhood or or parenting was actually um, quite uh, apropos. It was a it was it was a good uh, good a good interview. So you know, it's yeah. interesting is is that you know all these late night guys are doing this. Um, so you've got uh, uh, Jimmy Kimmel does it does a real uh, he's been doing great he, stuff. He, on yeah, he does great. He Inclu really good. Including the wolf like walking through the Russian uh, uh, supposedly the Russian uh, apartment Dormitory. building. Yeah, which by the way I watched that and I, and this is before like word got out that this yeah. was this was a fake. Um, yeah. It was a Siberian, an old Siberian husky. Because I have an old Siberian husky. She yeah. looks and walks the same way, and I'm watching yeah. this thing. What a bunch of BS! But ABC, <laughs> ABC News knew this. Tim, did you hear about this? No. So ABC knew about this that this was a total hoax, and yet they reported it like it was happening. Ooh, they should they should be slammed for that. You know, yeah. they got some they got some heat because the news division was like. You know, letting letting the thing yeah. play out a little bit, but yeah, that's that's pretty bad. You know, that's almost as bad as letting your kid grow up to play video games and record them and put them on <laughs> YouTube, right? Because <laughs> that is PewDiePie, <laughs> PewDiePie at number one, sixty three million views this week for PewDiePie's Man. videos. So, so here's here's what I'm thinking. You know, the way that web series creators are complaining right now about PewDiePie, right? They're like, oh my god, this guy just plays video games and gets all these views. I'm sure. That, that people, producers of theater productions would see the Lumiere brothers and they're like, they just shot a train pulling into a station and they've got people lined up around the block to watch this movie of a train pulling. There's no story there. It's just a train pulling into a station. You know, and they were probably really frustrated. Uh, yeah, I'm sure they were. But you know what? There's something to be said here. I mean, the fact is these guys are getting watched, right? Right. Doing... But but my point is nobody goes to a movie theater to watch a train pull into a station anymore. Right. That's so very true. how yeah. long is this going to last? I don't right. know. That's a good point. That's a very good point. And, you know, too, to some degree, a lot of these, if you look at these popular channels, and Sandy, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. This is not about story. This is personality-driven, right? Yep. And I have 
have to say I am with Tim on this one. How long is this going to last? Because I have been, it does sort of make one, a lot of, a lot of the content they're producing is based on their personalities and talking to young people. And it's sort of like Mick Jagger. Like if you're the, if you're Mick Jagger in his 20s, you don't envision that you're going to be still doing the Rolling Stones on stage in your 60s or whatever he is. 70s. 70s. Right. 70s. Yeah. So I, I wonder, because I know how hard those top YouTubers work. They work so hard. I wonder how long they can sustain that. Like, do they have a 50-year arc in them? Are, who's their audience when they're in their 70s? So well, I also it, it, am concerned about how they can sustain it. It, it does depend on the video game industry right? for a lot of them mm -hmm. and what kind of investment is there going to be not only in the video game technology and the capturing of these video games uh, but in the investment in the networks that are supporting this video game capture type stuff. I mean would you ever expect like a movie studio to invest money in a company that takes video game footage and repurposes it at a, as other content? In fact, a lot of them are, are, are complaining about there, it. There was, there was a transition there, Alon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Keep sometimes, trying. Sometimes he's a little too subtle. But <laughs> so, Keep trying. But it has happened, that investment, because Warner Brothers... <laughs> I need another cup of coffee this morning. I'm, I'm, like, I'm like just striking out here. Warner Brothers <laughs> may invest 10 to $15 million in machinima. So they may. They may. They may. And that's a big, yeah. a big distinction, right? Because they, yeah. the big guys have been burned before doing this, right? Yeah, they, they had South by Southwest in Houston. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's Texas. It's all, it's, it's, you know, you can, in Connecticut, Texas, is, it's out there. So, um, but uh, they, may, they may do this, according to TubeFilter. Um, and the Wall Street Journal. And the Wall Street right. Journal, so it's got to be legit. Um, so, you know, so what are they going to get out of this? What's, what's the advantage for Warner Brothers to do this? It's not video game footage, I would assume, right? This is, this well, is investing Well, War into... Warner Brothers is heavily invested in the video game industry. You know, if you, they've put out some web series that promote uh, video games as well. So it kind of fits into the, the game plan of what they're doing. It, it'll be interesting to see what their long-term commitment is. And it's still, you know, for as long as we've been doing this, it's still early days. And um, yeah. there, there's a lot of different things going on. I mean, even um, companies in Europe are trying to get into this space and really connect with the U.S. audience. Um, would that be Daily Motion? That, that would be Daily Motion. So that is our next story <laughs> this week. Daily Motion's three million <laughs> nice dollars. <laughs> exactly. There we go. So they're going to put three million dollars into an original, or they're putting a bid in uh, for Mario Batali, um, who's doing a an original web series. And I guess Daily Motion will be kind of, I would imagine, having some original programming on the service itself would lend itself to attracting more viewers. Tim, is that the, the approach here? Yeah, I mean, they're kind of smart about it. I was talking to the guys at Daily Motion, uh, Nick Fortunato, who's on the, uh, the board of directors for the International Academy of Web Television, and uh, Nick was telling me about this series that they're doing with Mario. They've shot it already, where, uh, and I guess it's out, one episode's out, um, where uh, he interviews popular musicians. Um, so he said it was, <laughs> talk about a scheduling nightmare, you know, you've got... Yeah you're trying to get all these personalities to one place at the same time and good you know luck. yeah good luck on that but uh, to me it sounds it sounds interesting because people like musicians and they like to learn more about the people that they love and so I, I think that's uh, a great way to go and, and do things you know you want to be able to discover more a lot of people you know will go out of their way when when they're a fan of somebody and they'll search for them using whatever social media tools they can can find whether it's Facebook Twitter or what's that other one Tumblr Tumblr yes <laughs> <laughs> Tumblr has hired 
a director of media to set sights specifically on Hollywood. So uh, they're out there now trying to, to make this almost like the, the long-form Twitter that, that Hollywood can use to further promote itself. Um, Sandy, you know, we've, we've had a lot of people on doing uh, web series that try to do this transmedia concept, and a lot of times Tumblr is a big part of that. So are, are you doing, what are you suggesting people do when, when they go out and, and, and produce a web series? To, you know, what, what platforms do you like to use to promote and tell the story? Well, if you have the bandwidth, you should use them all. Mm -hmm. um, the problem to me is just the amount of time that you have in your day. Um, so I actually don't use Tumblr, but I and I don't use Instagram, but I I am big on Twitter. I think it's super important, and I'm big on Facebook. And um, to me, Twitter is the best tool because you have sort of a equal access globally to everybody. If you work it well, you can get a, a hold of people um, wherever you want to find an audience. But oh, I, little, I will say pockets. I probably need to add more social media. I just don't have the bandwidth. Yeah, it's a matter of time. You know, we, we talk about it, even with this show, it's just, you know, it, it's easy to shoot it. It's easy to do the show. It's hard to promote the show because you've yeah. got all these different channels and you don't know where that audience that might fit with what you're doing is is living. I mean, the same could even be said for which video platform you put it on, you know, Daily Motion versus YouTube or something yeah. like that. It's it's hard. Sure. It's hard. Well, I, I think one of the important things is know where your audience is. And if your audience is on Tumblr, then you better figure out how to use Tumblr. Uh, that's, that's really, a good point. <laughs> really, really interesting. Um, twice now I've seen Bernie Sue, uh, our friend Bernie Sue, the creator of Lucy Bennett Diaries, uh, give a presentation on how to monetize social media. And it's a great presentation. If you ever get a chance to see it, if he's speaking someplace, go there and check it out. But with his new series, Emma Approved, what they're doing is... Uh, in the show notes to the videos, they're having links to uh, different sponsors. And so when they're tweeting stuff out, they'll tweet out a, a picture of a dress and they'll have a link to a page where you can click and go buy that dress. And they're making money that way. So it's, it's think about, you know, what does your audience want? What are they going to want to buy? And in, in terms of everything in your video, uh, if it appeals to your audience and they would want to buy it, then just make that those links available and make sure that they're set up with affiliate connections so that you can get paid for that. Um, you know, that's it's a great it's a great way to make extra bu extra bucks because you know what I've been doing we can talk about this uh, in the past too with my my product review channel Tim I am almost to five thousand subscribers now can you believe that just doing that's all great this stuff? you know when you get to ten thousand you can apply to go to a YouTube space and oh. use the YouTube studios uh, for free that's so right. you better you better get to uh, ten thousand quick yeah I need to so I can take the train and uh, do do my there you go so if you're yeah. listening to this show just go over to Lon's site what how can they subscribe to your show Lon Lon TV so go over there hit the hit the subscribe button and add your name to the list and uh, increase my numbers so that there will that will help I do affiliate links to everything that I review and it's now half my revenue comes from that so That's great. It, it's it's been wonderful and a lot of and times. You know, you can link. You're linking in, and and even if they don't buy what you review, if they buy anything, you're you're going to get credit for it. Are Are you making enough money to go to the movies? Uh, no, not not at all. But uh, <laughs> uh, some people are. You know, it, so let's take a look at the the top five uh, movies of the weekend. Uh, number five is uh, Three Days to Kill. That was open. It was an action movie that opened up about a week ago. Now, the number five movie in America at at the moment for the weekend is only bringing in four point eight million dollars. Which is remarkably low. Um, hey, again. <laughs> hey, welcome back. Looks like uh, the, the car the car cuts you off after a few minutes. So we were just talking about the top five movies of the week. You know, there, there's some web series people that are making more money than the top five, the number five movie here. Four point eight million dollars for Three Days to Kill for the weekend. Uh, number four was Monuments Men. And Sandra, Sandra, saw you saw it. it. I saw you, it. I saw what'd it. you think? Because I know uh, Dane saw that and he wasn't too crazy about it. What did What did you think? It's, it's a fun movie. It's enjoyable. It doesn't really advance the story through conflict. It, it's mm -hmm. basically, it's fun to watch, but everything happens that you would expect to happen, and the ending that you expect to happen happens. It's a beautifully shot film. There's some great moments in it, but there's, there's virtually no surprises, and 
I, I don't get a sense of you're ever like in doubt that these guys are going to do what they're, they set out to do. Right. So it, it, it's, it, it's pretty much just follow the dots. So it, it, is, uh, it is a, a real um, predictable film, but... But still hey, enjoyable. It's still entertaining enjoyable. is entertaining. So yeah. it was, uh, yep. you enjoyed it, so that, that's yep. all that I matters. I enjoyed it. Lego Movie, number three. 209 million bucks overall, $21.5 million this weekend. This has been a really fun film. Um, I, I don't leave my house, but if I did, I, I would go see that one. Yeah, you would. Um, I'm right there with you, Lon. Yeah. <laughs> hey, at least you yeah. got into your car today. That's, I that's made an, into the car. That's great. Now, do your neighbors like wonder why the heck you're in your car? Like, in the, are you in the passenger seat? I am in the passenger seat, um, but we were joking around that I should be sitting here looking like I'm driving while I'm talking to y'all. Yeah, that would be fun. And actually, you could, you could like, um, you know, like flip the, uh, the guy off that cuts you off and stuff. That would be kind of fun. Uh, Number two, road. yeah, that's it. Get out the road. You wouldn't, do, you wouldn't flip off this guy because number two is Son of God. So, um, you know, if you take a cue from the publishing industry where the Bible is the best-selling book ever, you know, you just print a Bible and you're going to sell them, right? Um, so this is a movie about Jesus, like his early life, uh, you know, through, uh, you know, all the things that we know about. Um, 25.7 to $26.7 million weekend. So that's number two on the list. Yeah, that major, major marketing effort behind this where uh, this one's a Mark Burnett um, production, and mm -hmm. so he reached out to all the churches. He, he actually reached out to Houston, believe it or not, to <laughs> Joel, Joel Osteen, the big megachurch guy right. in Houston, and uh, they mobilized the troops and had people praying that the movie would do well. And not only did they have them pray, they had them get their butts in the seats. In the seats, buy the tickets. Friday night, buy the tickets, and um, they knocked the block off the Lego movie. So there you go. I, I think this year... That's good, Tim, gonna, knocking the block yep, off. That's excellent. There you go. I stole it. Um, <laughs> there, there, there's going to be... This is going to be the year of the Jesus movie and all the, all the biblical. It's going to be a Bible year uh, because this movie's doing well. We're going to see a lot of other biblical type movies. Noah is coming out with Russell Crowe. We're going to see a lot of religion on the screen, and you know, God knows we need it right now um, <laughs> because it's just going to be nonstop. Wow. Well, get ready for that. And I guess it's kind of a predictable uh, revenue path too, because you know, not a bad idea to go market it at churches, right? It's just going to be nonstop. Non <laughs> <laughs> that is our. Tim, Tim should get paid to do these segues. This is great. Uh, nonstop is uh, apparently not. <laughs> apparently not. Yeah, we're working on the monetization problem. Sandy, can we get money for this show? Can you help us with that? Uh, can I get Can I get paid every time Juan gets the transition? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it, it'll be a very low budget for that, um, but nonstop is number one, twenty-eight and a half million to thirty million dollars. Uh, you know, another action flick. But you know, where do they? You know, you, you think at some point they're going to stop coming up with the concept of, for these movies. So the concept what, what here. What do you mean concept? It's well, the, the same. Concept. It's the same. Well, it's same like one. here's the thing. There's like there's like a there's like some unique thing of the action movie that happens. So for what they used a white guy instead of a black guy, like <laughs> yeah, maybe that. Fifty-seven well, with the, Wesley Snipes. Well, this one's a little different because this one is like the guy on the plane you don't know who it is and he's killing like right he's killing the passengers one at a time that that's the deal from at least what yeah. i saw from the commercial so yep. um wesley snipes was a little bit more in your face about it like he knew who yeah. his enemy was um yeah. but uh, but a lot of visual effects i'm sure you need that because you really can't fly planes around the way they were doing it in the uh in the thing there and because those poor visual effects artists who are out there right now protesting, at least they will be in three hours, oh. uh, from 1 to 3 p.m. This is not resolved yet because this was a big deal last year. So tonight's the Oscars, by the way, in case anyone's wondering. Um, and tonight uh, they will be gathering from 1 to 3 p.m. at the intersection of Hollywood Boulevard and Vine Street. So for me, the Connecticut and, sheltered and person, gonna, where is that, they're Tim? Gonna, they're going to walk as close as possible as they can to the Dolby Theater on Hollywood Boulevard. So where the Chinese Theater is at is where the Oscars are held. Got it. And that's where the Dolby Theater is. And so this is about, I'd say, a quarter of a mile to a half a mile away is Hollywood and Vine. So you're going to meet there. And basically walking from there to... Um, as you get to the corner of Hollywood and Highland, everything's closed off. You can't get to the Chinese theater on the day of the Oscars, even the day before the Oscars. 
if the streets are closed off, you can't get anywhere near. There's police barricades everywhere. And so I think it's great that they're going there. They don't want to disrupt the Oscars, and even if they wanted to, they couldn't um, because they it, they just can't get anywhere near the Oscars. I mean, basically, they're gonna the closest that they'll probably get is about a block away. And they just um, want to be heard here. It sounds like really is. Yeah, I mean is, the right? big the big issue is if you're a visual effects artist, there um, are tax incentives that the studios are using to their advantage, and it's good business, right? Right. Um, so they'll go to Canada, either to Vancouver, Toronto, or uh, Montreal. In some cases, maybe Winnipeg. Um, and they'll use visual effects artists up there. And so the Canadian government will pay them tax dollars to bring their movies to Canada. And so if you're a visual effects artist living in Los Angeles or living in New York, you basically need to move to Canada in order to work. Mm. And so at that point, you're living out of a hotel, you're making peanuts of what what you used to, and it, and if you're a visual effects company in Los Angeles, you're competing against companies that are are able to, um, you know, that are bidding seven million when you're bidding ten million for the job. And right. so, in order for you to even be on a level playing field, you got to lose three million dollars. And there's no back end; you don't get any residual. It's a work for hire thing. The studio owns it all. And so it's a really messed up system, and I think it needs to be worked out so that people can earn a living wage or better and somehow participate in the longevity and success of these films because a lot of these films that do well, they're, they're doing well because of the visual effects work that went into it. And so much, of, so much goes into these films now that you can't make a film without some kind of yeah, it, it needs to be a win-win situation for everybody, and right now it's definitely not. Well, that is a shame, but they can go down to the YouTube uh, uh, space in L.A. because they are uh, putting together a... Maybe they could uh, you know, talk about their, their, their woes there in front of a Hollywood-style set that uh, they have built inside the YouTube creator space. It looks like they're, they're building sets that everyone can use, Tim. Is that the, the Yeah, picture? so kind of the idea of what, what YouTube is really good at is they know that... that people search for stuff and they search for videos and it's topical and in order to get found on a topic you need to have a video created in advance and so what YouTube is doing is helping content creators create these topical videos in advance of an event whether that event is Valentine's or whether that event is the Oscars and so they built like a Oscar set there for some of the YouTube creators to uh, to check out and um, you know it's they, they want to encourage those creators um, to create videos that support the award season. Um, so it's you know it's fun time. It's it's definitely not um, you know not not any comic book type business. No, it isn't because they are spending. Disney is spending two hundred million dollars to film a Marvel series in New York City for Netflix. So all right, so now this is interesting. So this is not Netflix. Uh, producing it. It is Netflix paying Disney to produce it. Is that the right path yeah, here? I, I, I think this one's going to be kind of like a House of Cards type deal mm. where, you know, instead of, um, you know, David Fincher and the producers of House of Cards shopping around a show uh, and then winding up at Netflix, uh, Disney went to Netflix and, you know, said, hey, we've got these different Marvel characters like Daredevil or Jessica Jones, Iron Fist, and uh, Luke Cage. And so why don't we do, do, a, web, or do a series and stick it on Netflix? And, uh, you know, so that, that's kind of how it's going to play out. Sounds pretty cool. Sandy, what, what uh, you know, Netflix is changing the world a little bit in that you're, you're seeing, you know, the, the production is the same as it might be for television, but these are web series in essence. Is there... You know, what are you seeing opportunities for some of these folks? Because now I mean, we're getting people now used to the, the notion of consuming content on the web in some way, shape, or form, consuming story-based content. So it's not PewDiePie, you know, twiddling his thumbs on a video game. It's an actual really good story told out with really good actors in a professional way. Um, are, is there excitement that this might, you know, trickle down a little bit into the, the web series space? I think it's so exciting. It's great because it definitely... Um, elevates the knowledge in the regular population that there is short form content that you can consume 
online. And so if you have a house of cards out there, it just gives you, as a smaller creator, the opportunity to go, we're a show that's like House of Cards over here, you know. I mean, it's just exciting. And people like to binge watch, so it's an interesting model now for putting content out, any size content that you put all of your shows out there so people can um, watch them in a row the way that they like to do nowadays. So I, I think it's exciting when you can download what you want when you want, and it's just going to keep happening more and more. It might be easier to explain what you're doing to people now, for people now yeah. too, right? Like, hey, we're like Netflix, except we're on YouTube, and you can watch us. You can binge watch us there. Yeah, um, exactly. And, uh, you know, and I think Tim, you know, I, I've been following my social media threads. I finally caught up with House of Cards, thankfully. And you know, it, it's. I think it's a good strategy to do this binge thing, mainly because no one is talking about the story. All they're saying is, "Oh my God, House of Cards!" Like, you know, we're, we're you know what I mean? Like, they're afraid mm -hmm. to give away anything to the point where. You're developing buzz just on the topic of the show, and people t tend to watch it because of that, right? I mean, it's. I think it's. Well, got the, some good... the thing is, we don't have the numbers, so we don't really know. Mm, that's true. You know, I mean, it feels like people are watching it. It sounds like people, but right. we don't have those actual numbers, so I, I, I couldn't tell you. Uh, and our buddy Dane would definitely argue. We definitely with disagree. Me. Yeah, he's. Yeah. Uh, He's he's going. He had a uh, he was at the YouTube Maker thing yesterday. He had a he had a um, tuxedo on. If you go on his uh, Facebook thing, nice. He looks, uh, he looks pretty sharp. Yeah, and, and I think that's very true. And except in the case of Netflix, it really doesn't matter if they watch it or not, as long as they keep the subscriber, right? Yep. So that's a good deal. So uh, if you can imagine that, Sandy, you could get paid if even if nobody watches your show. I think that sounds like a good model for <laughs> a lot of us. <laughs> it certainly does. <laughs> So, well, that will bring us to the end of our show. So, now, because I'm living in the dark and I was about to go to Houston instead of Austin, Tim, when is South by Southwest taking place? So, the South by Southwest Interactive starts on Friday, the uh, 6th March or 7th. 7th. March 7th. And it goes through the 12th, Tuesday oh, so the 12th. Five-day thing. So, then you come home for yeah, a little that, bit. That's just, that's the interactive. There's also film and there's oh. also music. And I think this year they're, they're dabbling in comedy. Wow. So it'll be interesting to see. Uh, rumor has it that uh, Jimmy Kimmel Live is going to be at South by Southwest. So wow. it should, should be a fun time. Wow, that's right. interesting. So that, so how long does the whole thing go then? It's like two, two and a half, three weeks? Like 10, ten days. Wow. Right? Just in yeah. time for NAB after that, right? Just about. Wow. Well, it is uh, definitely a busy show season, so we will uh, uh, let you all get ready for the Oscars. Are you both doing any Oscar stuff tonight, like Oscar parties or anything like that? Yeah, I'm going to go pick it. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you, Tim. I'm happy that you're joining them. That's sweet. Um, so. I am going to be just watching at home and then um, looking, starting to pack for South by Southwest. <laughs> well, lucky you. So I, I'm going to be sitting here at home because it's probably going to snow again tonight. We have a, there's an Oscar party in Hartford, Connecticut tonight. They do every year. It's a, it's a fundraiser and. Uh, they encourage people to dress up like the uh, you know, like an Oscar nominee. Or, oh, fun! Uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. And it was one year I think um, one of the Planet of the Apes movies was was nominated for something, uh, and somebody came like with this amazing Planet of the Apes costume, like it was mm -hmm. uh, unbelievable. So there is some uh, there is some culture here in Connecticut occasionally. So it's pretty. Maybe, maybe pretty you should cool, take so. your take your guns and go as a Somali and see if you can hijack it. Captain yeah. Phillips style. Yeah, that 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 would be uh, something to try. Although I don't I don't know how that flies, but we'll, <laughs> we'll give it, see what happens. And on that note, as <laughs> Tim's tip of the week, uh, we will wrap up this episode of Behind the Video. Sandy, where can people find you and the work that you're doing? Um, you can find me at uh, on Twitter at Purse Dog TV or SP Wright, and on Facebook at Purse Dog TV, and then um, my work is on YouTube at the Purse Dog TV channel. And, and the Rappin' with the Reaper channel for my Ask Grim web series. Ask Grim, so, that sounds interesting. Tell us about that real quick. What's that about? Th that's a talk show hosted by the Grim Reaper. Oh, wow. So that's, <laughs> that's deep. Um, <laughs> yeah. Does he, does he kill the guests um, before they come on or after? No. The rule is that he's only allowed to interview already dead people, fictional characters, or magical creatures. Because, yeah, if you went on a show and you were alive, you wouldn't make it. Yeah, that's very true. Wow, that's that's a cool <laughs> idea. I'm gonna check that one out. I'm gonna subscribe to that one. Sounds like a fun little show there. So Thank you. very cool. Tim, where can people find you? At one Tim Street. And you can find Tim in Austin at the barbecue place. 
Yeah, oh, all yeah. of them. All of them. All of them. And <laughs> everyone. Our, our web series meetup is on Sunday at 11 a.m. at the Stephen F. Austin. There well, you go. Check it out. Don't so it. don't listen to me and go to Houston. And uh, I'm going to stay right here in <laughs> in uh, in Connecticut. And uh, you can find me at Lon Seidman on Twitter, L O N S E I D M A N. We record this show every Sunday morning at 11:30 a.m. Eastern, 8:30 Pacific. Except this morning because I had to get my my car out of hock before the snow came. Um, but uh, we try to do it live, so you can log in and ask questions of our guests and Tim and I as well. So you can find us on iTunes and Stitcher and YouTube. So subscribe to us everywhere. BehindTheVideo.com is the portal to it all, so you can find everything we do there. And this will be the, the end of our 88th episode, but we'll be back next week, and this show is a wrap. Thanks, Bye. both of you. Thank you. Thanks, Sandy. So, Thank you. And your internet works great in the car. Yeah. No, that